radio. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dr. Duncan McCollum coming to you from KSCO. I hope you're all having an awesome day. And um, I am very happy to be here. I have a couple thoughts today that I want to go over. And uh, starting off with, uh, you know, I just, it's pretty amazing what's going on in the world. And I remember growing up, I was the youngest of the kids in my family, the youngest of all the cousins. And, you know, even in the neighborhood, I was one of the younger ones. So back in those days, there was a lot of stuff going on that would uh, come down on you. And one of my favorite phrases were sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And uh, that was always a safe haven. You could always say that to anybody giving you a hard time. And you knew that all of a sudden you were doing pretty well and that nothing was going to hurt you. But uh, those phrases seem to be gone today because words seem to matter. And I'm going to go over one word that I think is the most deadly word on the planet. And I'll go over that in just a few minutes. I'm also going to start uh, the beginning of a program that I'm going to be doing for several weeks where I'm gonna start walking people through a, a ketogenic program so that they can start to get healthy, lose weight, uh, learn how to uh, get your body into ketosis, learn what foods are toxic and what foods are not toxic, and uh, the differences in uh, individuals as far as them being healthy or not. So uh, at any rate, I'll be going over that. But again, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me is the key um, for today. However, there is one deadly word I will be going over. And the other phrase I remember from childhood is, I'm rubber, you're glue. Everything you say sticks to me and or bounces off of me and sticks to you. So, you know, it's about time we become a little more resilient in our life. And uh, so the one word I really want to focus on today that's a sticker that will actually stop you in your tracks, cause anxiety, cause, um, you know, you to have ulcers and <laughs> all kinds of things is one word. And the word is maybe. So you can go, yes, no, or maybe. And maybes will kill you because they are uh, they stop you in your tracks. You can be frozen when you can't make your mind up. I'll give you a couple examples. We've probably, most of us who've done anything ever on the internet have seen people, you know, doing flips on skis or snowboards or jumping off of roofs, doing backflips in the swimming pools or any kind of these things, right? And then all of a sudden, somebody gets halfway through a act and they lose their commitment. They don't make it and then they crash and burn. And uh, that's because they've lost their commitment. They weren't certain on what they're going to do. They got halfway through their flip or what have you, and they got stuck in a maybe and then it almost killed them. So maybes are the things that um, are uncertainties and, and they can really do a lot of harm for you. You know, I, I think about even when I was a kid, I remember one thing that I did that almost killed me and thank God I, I pulled through with it, but we were having a party up at my parents' house and there were, you know, a bunch of my friends were there. and We were jumping off of the roof into the swimming pool. And uh, one day I decided, or one, I decided I'm going to do a flip off of that thing. So I'm up on the roof and I tried to do a flip and I actually made it, but my friend said I was an inch from hitting my head on the cement concrete. And that's how close I came to probably cashing in my chips. But, you know, thank God I was at least committed that I thought I could do that flip. But as we go through life and especially in uncertain times right now, there are so many divisive elements out there that are causing people to be stuck in in you know indecision 
And so I want to talk about, uh, you know, what can happen and how somebody can be rendered um, basically incompetent in their own decisions. And one of the ways that happens is through the dogma that can be put down. Hypnotism is something that can be ha that happens without even having a hypnotist necessarily doing it. And this is a very gradual dumbing down of an individual's awareness. This can be done by, you know, you put somebody under stress for, you know, uh, enough time that their parasympathetic nervous system shuts down. That's the uh, rest and relax nervous system, the one that keeps your heart pumping, your lungs lunging, your liver livering, and your uh everything moving without thinking. I remember as a kid one night being afraid to go to sleep because I thought I would, I would forget to breathe. But when we are under stress, the, the sympathetic uh, fight or flight mechanism kicks in and that causes us to, it shuts down our immune system, it shuts down our digestive system, shuts down our cognitive function and um, our immune system, if I didn't already say that. And it causes us to be on high alert. Well, once the uh, tiger leaves the room, the uh, sympathetic nervous system goes down and the parasympathetic relaxation system kicks in again. And that's the way it's supposed to be. But what ends up happening is uh, because of chronic constant stress in the media, um, in the world, what's ever going on in politics, what's going on in the world, um, quote, other world powers, unquote, who are all dictators, um, you know, you start to get a little bit afraid of what's going on, or you go numb to it. But when you see or hear a little trickle of a, a this is how you hypnotize somebody or you brainwash them. You just pick a party line or you pick a comment and you just keep putting that out again and again and again. At first, it might be alarming to somebody or it might push against their, their better uh, senses. But you know, pretty soon, it just keeps going through and through and through and you become a little bit numb to it. Pretty soon, you just accept that voice coming through. And next thing you know, the person believes it to be true because they've heard it over and over and over again. So this is a way of taking certainty away from somebody and, and putting dogma into their, their um, planning or their, their life or their thought process. You know, I remember as a kid being in school, I would be looking out the window and then I'd get in trouble for daydreaming. And daydream is a bad thing. Don't daydream. You know, here's reality. This is a book. This is a wall. This is a chalkboard. This is a teacher. You know, this is the real part of life. Everything that you could see, feel, test, or take, taste. But what ends up happening when you drive that in so badly or so deeply is the individual's ability to be creative, to be inventive, can be dumbed down or deadened. It's gotten to a point where, you know, there's amazing um, people out there that come up with incredible things. And I think musicians are one of the ones that are able to break through this mold or artists, uh, musicians, artists, uh, and maybe athletes, because, you know, you push yourself as an athlete, uh, you set up a goal, and then you're going to achieve that goal. And now right now, athletics is in question. But as a musician, you have an aesthetic wavelength, something that you can't, that's not of the senses necessarily, because it, you create it, you create this aesthetic line. And when you're free to improvise on this, you can come up with amazing things. And when you have a dream or a goal, you can come up with a way of expressing that in words, in poetry, in books, in song. So. Uh, a lot of times people say, well, I'm not very um, musical or I'm not very creative or, or artistic. Well, I think you are and you can be, but it's something that you have to give yourself a chance to do. You know, so many of us have been told to sit down, 
shut up, get a good education, get a job, work hard, and, uh, you know, don't push it. And then at some point, you're going to be able to retire and live happily ever after. Well, we know happily ever after is about 17 months for the average individual to live in the United States after retirement. So, you know, that is not a very good dream. I mean, you know, you should be able to put away for your future. And, and we're told to put away for our financial future and to invest in our financial future. But one thing that we're not doing is necessarily putting our health legacy there. And because of what's going on in the world marketplace, um, the food industry is being put on its ear. There's a lot of stuff going on that is being slowly filtrated down to us to a point where it's going to seem normal to eat bugs pretty soon. You know, it's going to seem normal that there's a food shortage and all these kind of things. And if we just go along with what we're hearing and we don't realize the sanity or insanity of it, we're going to be the victim of that. So I want to just express what I started out to say, which is, you know, the most de deadly word in the world is maybe, because if you get stuck in a maybe, you're frozen. You can't say yes, you can't say no, and you get stuck in this moment of indecision, and it freezes you. So if you have those things going on in your life, if you're wondering about a career path or a relationship or um, anything, you know, what I recommend you do is get down a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle of it, and put plus sides on one, put a, a plus on the right side and a minus on the left side. Maybe that's too stereotypic. You got to put a plus on the left side and a right, a negative side on the other side. I don't care what you do. But then write down a something that you have an indecision about, a maybe about. On one side, write down the positiveness of of doing if if you were to get off of that maybe and make a decision. And then on the other side, the negative side, write down the negative things of making that decision or not making that decision. And then you can help mechanically get yourself out of this maybe. And you can move forward in life in a lot better way if you have a lot clearer path of where you want to go. So I mean, I, I can tell you, here's another example. A guy's on a train track and a train's coming. Well, should I go right or left? Left or right? Right or left? Boom. Too late. You were stuck in a maybe and now you're gone. So your health depends on you being stuck in a maybe or making a decision. And I mentioned earlier this morning or on the show that I am going to be imparting this group, anybody who wants to take part in it, on a, a seven to eight week course that I will be doing for half of the show every week, taking you through how to improve your diet, how to get yourself less dependent on simple sugars or toxins, toxic foods, and how to get your body burning something called ketones, which is the second fuel, and it comes from fat. Everything you eat besides the fat burns as glucose or sugar. Meat burns protein, burns as sugar. Most people don't know that. A lot of times people say, oh, I don't eat sugar anymore. I don't eat glucose, I eat vegetables. Vegetables burn as sugar. Some just burn quicker than the rest and it is a very hot, uh, smoky fuel. It's like burning damp pine in your fireplace. It will burn, but it's very smoky, very toxic, and um, it can cause a lot of disease and inflammation in your body, where if you burn ketones, which are fat, it burns like a gas stove, just a nice blue flame. So we'll be going through that. Um, it's going to take me about three to four weeks to set it up for you and to get my office prepared to do it. But, uh, you know, I will be going over some concepts along the way. Um, I encourage you to make a decision and don't be stuck in a maybe on your health. You know, time and gravity are not our friend. The longer you let your body stay sick or uh, unhealthy, the harder it's going to be for it to turn around. Your cells, of which you have 75 trillion of them, they all burn fuel, whether it's 
sugar or glucose or whether it's ketones or fat. And um, these cells have a, a life, a half-life. Every cell in your body is supposed to live a certain amount of time, then it dies and a second, a new cell is begot, begotten. And this is called apoptosis. That's, it's um, programmed cell death. Every cell in your body is supposed to live a certain amount of time and then go poof and die. And then all of the components of that cell are recycled for new cells to be used or that the, the byproducts of the cell are burned um, as fuel. So our body replaces and replenishes itself cell by cell um, throughout our life. The cartilage cells live for about seven years. Heart cells, uh, skin or stomach cells live for five days. So you get a whole new cell of your uh, um, lining in your stomach every five days because that's how long a stomach cell lives or a digestive tract cell. And your muscles live for about 120 days, the muscle cells. So when you're out working out, you're tearing up those old cells and you're causing apophagy, apoptosis of those cells. And then your body's gonna produce new cells. So we wanna teach you how to get healthier and healthier cells, not sicker and sicker cells. And that's gonna be the process of this uh, program I'm gonna be putting you on. I will be doing it um, on the radio show. The shows will be recorded. Um, I will have a Zoom link that you can sign up for so you can watch yourself, the show live. We'll also have an email list where you can um, get onto the email list and then we will send you the Zoom link separately if you're unable to watch it. And then also the Health Rebels um, Facebook group for those of you that want to get on there. It will be a community which you can reach out and talk to people in the group and find out different ways to make it work. So I am doing this because since COVID, before COVID started, um, or whatever you want to call that phenomenon, uh, we were doing this weekly for about a year and a half. We Every week at my office, we were running this program we got or seven weeks, seven weeks, seven weeks. COVID happened and it stopped and I have not been able to really do it since. Right now I don't have the availability to do it in person at my office, but I am gonna do it here on the radio and I'm gonna go through each week. And for instance, the first week, just to give you a little bit of an understanding, this is Dr. Dan Pompa's program, by the way, Dr. Dan Pompa, the cellular, cellular healing, um, giant. Uh, I'm one of his platinum doctors. There's uh, maybe 30 of us that are actively working with him um, on a weekly basis. And I've been with him for five years and uh, we've learned so much. When, when the ketogenic diet first came out about four or five years ago, we were the ones that would made it really brought it out and got it um, understood. And then a lot of other people picked it up. I've written two health books regarding it. One's called New Hope for Sciatica. The other one is called Turn Back Your Biological Clock. And um, in those books, I talk about how you can get your health back and turn back your biological clock. So instead of having six cells become six cells, we're actually going to teach your body how to make healthier and healthier cells. But I'm going to take a break and I'll be back in just a couple minutes and we'll go through this a little bit more. Here we go. Hey, this is Dr. Duncan McCollum, and I have this amazing patient, Lauren, here, and she had a few things to say. Hi, I'm Lauren Spencer, a local realtor, and I've been seeing Duncan for years now. I had a biking accident, and he's been adjusting me since then, and it's been amazing. But lately, I've had trouble with my feet, and I'm an avid walker, avid biker, avid uh, golfer, and uh, my feet were aching all the time, and I tried Duncan's TRT machine, which is an amazing stem cell machine that rejuvenates uh, the cells, and my feet, I've had like three or four um, sessions with the machine, and my feet are like new, no aches, no pains, it's a miracle, so I really highly recommend Duncan and his chiropractic services, but also that TRT machine. You got to try it. Thanks. 
Wow, thanks, Lauren. That was awesome. So we still have the $49 special. Come on in and see if it works for you. Thank you. This is Dr. Duncan McCollum, and I want to introduce you to Karen, another patient who's had some pretty serious surgeries in her back, terrible amount of pain, and has some incredible results with our SoftWave therapy machine. You've had a few different surgeries in your back, and you have steel putting the last three vertebrae together, and you were still in pain after that. Yes. So they put implanted in your spine. Spinal cord stimulator. It made everything so much worse. They revised that twice and added more paddles and ditched it all in. It continued to get worse, all trying to resolve the problem, which was a diaphragm cramp. That never went away. It started the day I woke up from the permanent implant, and it ended last week. Can wow. you take care of me? Thank oh you last God. week. See if the SoftWave therapy machine works for you. We have a $49 special that you can try. Call 459-9990. 831 <laughs> Okay, this is Dr. Duncan McCollum back. That's blood, sweat, and tears, spinning wheel. And you know, this is the thing you have. Uh, ups and downs in life, and uh, then you get stuck in a maybe. And I've been talking about that before. One reason we get sick is we're stuck in a maybe. One reason that our life doesn't go the way we want is because we are stuck in a maybe. We decide not to do something, or we want to do it, and we can't make our mind up to do it. And then that eats us alive because we know it's either the right or wrong thing to do. So you can be stuck in the maybe about doing something wrong or something right. And uh, it's a great tool to have. I learned this from a guy named L. Ron Hubbard, and it's been a tool that I've used a lot, and I really get a lot out of it. So remember that. Um, don't get stuck in a maybe. Make the decision. You can write down on one side of a paper the plus points about doing something and the negative points about doing something, and it might help you get out of that maybe and turn your life on. Because when you're in a maybe, there's nothing happening. So here we go. I've been talking about, um, you know, how to get your, your health back, and that's by being proactive. We definitely want you to um, take a stand. And now I'm going to be doing this seven-week course. It's going to start in a few weeks, but the more you uh, get ready for it, the better. You can email info at McCollum Family Chiropractic anytime and say, yes, I want to be part of the, the group. We'll be putting together an email group, a Facebook group, which is already there. You can already sign up for Health Rebels, and uh, we'll let you in. It's a private group. I will be doing these shows, and I will be doing them live on Zoom. So if you sign up ahead of time, you'll be given a Zoom link, and you can watch the show as we go. You can watch it later. We can email it to you later, and or you can decide not to do it. However, if you, do you know that we are rated, we're the most unhealthy country in the civilized world, right? We're rated 47th of the world. We have the sickest children in the, in the world. We, um, the fattest children in the world. Uh, 30, one out of 33 boys is autistic. Um, most people over, we have 80% of the population over 60 has multiple chronic inflammation diseases or autoimmune diseases. So, you know, I know there's people out there listening to this that need to do something about it. So I want to encourage you to tune in, tell your friends and don't think about it, just decide to do it. So the first week, what I'll be going over is, you know, shifting your body into ketosis. And what that means is get your body burning the, the other fuel, which it doesn't really know how to burn very well because we've been uh, feeding our body so many carbohydrates for so long that it doesn't even know how to burn a ketone. It doesn't even know what a ketone is. So that is what we're gonna teach your body to burn. And that's by utilizing healthy oils, healthy fats that you're gonna learn to replace 
the bad oils with, and then burning your own fat supplies and fat stores. And one of the problems with this is toxins are stored in your fat cells. So we're gonna teach you how to know when you're detoxing an exorbitant amount of these toxins that they can affect your health and make you sick. This is what's been called the keto flu before. It can actually unleash heavy metals, molds, other infections that can actually take your body over if your immune system isn't strong enough. So uh, again, I, I talked about this quite a bit um, before COVID. I've kind of left it alone because I couldn't do anything about it. But right now, my patients coming in are doing amazing with chiropractic, amazing with the, the stem cell machine, the soft wave therapy that we do. But so many of them need to get the chemical imbalances handled in their body. So I've been lazy. I've put it off as long as I can. I've been stuck in my own maybe as long as I can. On when should I start? So I've decided to put my foot down and we will be starting in probably four weeks. There's a probably, there's a maybe. But I know that it's coming. <laughs> it's just when my staff has uh, got it together that we can service you well. So week one, we're going to teach you what, what ketosis is and how to get your body burning ketones rather than craving um, carbohydrates. We're going to show you what good oils to eat and um, what quantity to eat, what kind of, of salts to be eating. We're going to actually teach you how to read a label on food and be able to determine how many carbs you're actually getting based on total carbohydrates and fiber content. So you'll know when you are eating carbs, which we do need to eat carbs, what kind to eat, the healthy kind and what unhealthy kinds to eat. So that will be week one. And then we're gonna go into the next week where we're gonna be talking about not necessarily eating less, but eating less often. So we're gonna teach you about eating windows and how these work, um, how your body uses 60% of its energy to digest food. So if you're eating all day long, throwing stuff in your mouth like a nut here or a, a cracker there, you're actually creating inflammation in your body 24 seven and your body's not being able to use that 60% of its energy to do something else. And it makes you more dependent on carbohydrates and it also weakens your immune system and cognitive function. Because when your body is digesting, think about eating a big turkey Thanksgiving meal, if you celebrate that. Um, the next thing you're going to do is be lying on a couch comatose because your body is putting all that energy into digesting that food. It shuts down brain function. It such, shuts down your muscles function. And um, it just goes in to try to digest all that stuff you put in there. And oftentimes we're eating way too much. So again, we'll be talking about what an eating window is. And, you know, if you have any medical conditions, um, you're going to want to check with your uh, medical doctor before you partake on this. And I'll make sure that you're understanding what you would be wanting to ask them. But this is going to help people actually at home without even coming into my office become healthier. Um, usually, oftentimes, people can lose 15 pounds in the first three or four weeks healthily. Michael Olson, who used to be the manager of the show, lost 30 pounds. And he said he lost two watermelons. So we're really looking forward to starting that. But, you know, you've got to decide to make a difference and that you can do it. So um, after that, week three, we're going to talk about intermittent fasting. You've probably heard about intermittent fasting. And when you fast, your body is going to be able to burn your stored energy, which is primarily fat on your body. But it also can be inflammation in your body. It can be swollen joints. It can be fluids in your body from an inflammatory response that are causing your joints to ache. They're causing your brain to be fogged. It can cause all these different things. So when you go into a fasting mode the right way, which we're going to teach you if you're able to do this and if you decide to do it uh, rather than think about it, your body's going to be, uh, become more able to break down the um, toxic foods that it is retaining or that you've been putting in there. 
And um, as we get into the week three, week four, your body's going to boost your own stem cell production. Now, stem cells are constantly being weighed in your body, and they're constantly, constantly replacing the old cells in your body. When you cut yourself um, or, or tear a muscle, your own body stem cells come out of the dormant uh, hiding place of your long bone, and they get into this bloodstream, and they migrate to the injured area, and then they uh, go in there like a chameleon, and they start to create that damaged cell. Now, just like a garden, first you have to you have to cultivate the soil, then you have to plant the seeds, and then you have to water and cultivate the garden. So a stem cell is like an egg and a sperm that come together. It's not going to become an eyeball overnight. It takes time, and it takes a quantity, and you have to understand that not all of them are going to make it. So you want to learn how to nurture your stem cells and feed them correctly, not eat the toxic food that's going to kill them. Um, and that's what we teach you throughout this diet or this lifestyle change. It's really a lifestyle change. And um, so when you boost your stem cells, it's a key. We're going to teach you how to do deep cellular detox because the fasting is going to help clean out the toxins that are held deep in your body. Probably the one of the most important parts of this is called hormone optimization. Hormones really create all of the functions in the body. When your body perceives the, when your brain perceives the environment through nervous um, input, it gets to the brain. The brain takes this um, impulse and sends it to something called the hypothalamus gland that sends a signal to the pituitary via both nerves and hormones or um, and then chemicals. And then these get to the pituitary gland, which is a little P-shaped gland in the center of, your, center of your brain that now sends several different hormones throughout the body to different hormone or endocrine glands. Thyroid gland, parathyroid gland, adrenal glands, ovaries, testicles, things like that. The pancreas, all these endocrine glands are told what to do by the pituitary gland which again puts out, these glands now put out hormones that go through your bloodstream and connect to the cell walls of 75 trillion cells and tell those cells how to respond. So if the cell walls are toxic and plugged from you know, the 2.5, the 250 billion pounds of toxins we dump onto the earth every year by the glyphosate, by the heavy metal and, um, mercury that's been passed down four generations through mom's umbilical blood from our teeth, from the lead that's come all the way down from, you know, when they led at the pipes back in Rome, also comes down four generations. Our own toxins that we receive this lifetime, you wonder why our bodies are so sick, or maybe you don't. So there is a road, no simple highway, and uh, we can walk down that road together. And I'm going to take you through it. Now, some of you are going to run into trouble along this road. It's a, it's a rough and rocky road, you know. But if you don't travel it, you'll never get somewhere. You'll sit on a lump, sit on a log, and just become sicker and sicker and sicker and more inflamed and more inflamed and more inflamed. Pretty soon, your brain will be so toxic that you won't even remember who you are. And you won't have to worry about making decisions. But, you know, you can make a decision, and that would be to listen to the show next week, listen to the show, tell your friends about it in the next several weeks. We're going to launch in uh, probably four or five weeks, soon as my staff is ready, and I'll keep you apprised of that. Get, go to info at McCollum Family Chiropractic right now and send a, a message saying, I want to be part of the program. We'll get your email so that you can... Uh, see these shows. I'm, I'm Zoom recording all of my shows here, and they're also on Facebook right now. But you'll be able to watch that, especially when we get down to the doing this. I'll have it written out on the Zoom meeting so that you'll be able to follow it step by step. So I hope that you take part of it. And right now we're going to take another short break, and I'll be right back in a couple of minutes. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. 
Hey everybody, this is Dr. McCollum. I have this amazing guy, Gary, here, who's a new patient to our office. And he just came up to the front and started talking about stuff, and I wanted you to just express what you're telling us. What is really satisfying to me is coming here and meeting fine people like Natalie, and uh, frequently she's the uh, utility player running around the office. And you can always tell that Natalie's on the phone because she will always say, McCallum Chiropractic, I can help you. And you know what? She can and she does. And it just it makes my heart jump just to realize uh, there's such helpful and friendly people in the office. Everyone from Angus who runs the TRT machine, the other chiropractors in the office, and the uh, administrative staff like Arlene, very friendly and very helpful. If you want to feel comfortable at a chiropractor's office, come to Dr. McCallum. He's conveniently located at the top of 41st Avenue. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Call today for a complimentary consultation, 831-459-9990. This is Dr. Duncan McCollum, and I want to introduce you to Karen, another patient who's had some pretty serious surgeries in her back, terrible amount of pain, and has some incredible results with our soft wave therapy machine. The next week you came in and said, well, my, my low back is so painful. This is better. Can we do anything for your low back? So we said, well, let's try that. So what happened there? The pain stops and it's all but gone. Oh I watched God. the 49er game for an hour in a row in a chair. Wow. I'm sleeping. Yeah. And uh, I was able to walk on the beach. The problem came from the surgeries. You it's really new, changing new everything. Bumps. Yeah, those are God bumps. Yeah. Um, and I have them too. Yeah. Um, because I know it's a miracle. See if the Softwave therapy machine works for you. We have a $49 special that you can try. Call 459-9990-831-459-9990. Hello, everybody. Dr. Duncan McCollum back for the next few minutes in that spinning wheel. I, I blood, sweat, and tears. What a great song about going up and down and knowing that you're going to come down to gravity at some point. But you know what? You have the power in yourself, the power to do whatever you want in your life. And don't get stuck thinking about stuff and not acting on it. It's called stuck in a maybe. So you want to do something. Either decide to do it or just decide not to do it and scratch it off your list. But so many of us go through life wishing we had done something or thinking about something we want to do and never taking action. So, uh, you know, I gave some examples earlier about this, you know, about it's some of the simple ones that we see often, if you ever get on the internet, which sometimes I do, unfortunately, I get on there and I see some guy doing a, a flip on, uh, you know, skis and then halfway through, he's no longer committed and he crashes and burns, you know, and, and this is what happens in life. We start something and then we second guess ourselves. And oftentimes it comes from security or it comes from confidence. And, um, you know, as a kid, as a little kid, oftentimes we're very confident and then we're told, no, no, you can't, you can't, no, no, you can't, you can't, to a point where we get programmed to believe we can. And, uh, you know, perfect, well, an example is they took a bunch of fleas and put them in a jar and they put a lid on the jar. The fleas would jump up to the top of that jar and then realize that they hit their little flea heads on the jar. They took the lid off the jar after a while, the fleas wouldn't jump any farther. They were conditioned to only jump that high. And even though we're not fleas, I believe that we are conditioned in our life through the media, through education, if you want to call it that, to only jump so high. You know, um, so many of us are programmed to, to sit down, shut up, do what we're told, get a good education, get a job, don't ask questions, and then, you know, work till we're 65. Maybe we have a retirement and 17 months later, we're dead. That's the average. So you can break out of that mold. You can do something about it. So I, uh, I encourage you to decide to change something that you've wanted to change for a long time. It could be your diet. It could be your, uh, your friends that you're hanging around with that you know are not helping you. It could be you want to get some more exercise, but you know you can't do it because you get, you're in pain all the time. Well, 
That's where I come in, you know, come in and try the stem cell machine or chiropractic so that you can start to exercise. And then as we work through this new detox program we'll be doing um, in a few months, few weeks, you'll be able to utilize it to the best of your ability. And what I want for you is to be able to come out of this and go, wow, I'm more able than I was going in. Now, if I decide I want to do something, I can do it. I have less, less brain fog. I have, uh, you know, more energy, my pain level, my inflammation level's gone down. Um, we're, I lost a lot of weight, you know? And so these are things that you can achieve with this uh, ketogenic diet um, that I will be teaching. It's a fasting ketogenic diet. I used to teach it before the three year debacle lockdown that we had. And um, I, have been wanting to start it, but I've been stuck in this thing of this maybe and going, when should I? I don't really want to. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, but my responsibility levels caught and up to the point where I go, my patients need it. People need it. Whether I want to do it or not, it's my duty to be able to help you guys get as healthy as you can by um, at least taking advantage of some of the newest um, technology out there regarding the healthy cell. Cells, um, there's 75 trillion of them. They um, have a, something in them called the mitochondria, which is a power plant, which is which creates energy out of two types of fuel, ketones, which is, comes from fat, and glucose or sugar that comes from everything else from protein and carbohydrates. Sometimes people go, no, I don't eat carbohydrates. I, I eat vegetables. You know, they're thinking a carbohydrate is a potato chip or a potato or rice. Well, carbohydrates, broccoli, they're just different types of carbohydrates. So they all burn as sugar. And um, so, you know, I, it, my my goal is to get you to change that. Um, a lot of the stuff you're putting in your body and become more aware of the toxins in your house. Like some of the, in the next few weeks, uh, before we even start this diet, I'll be talking about what's under your sink. What kind of chemicals are under your sink? What kind of laundry detergent are you using? What are you putting under your arms? You know, a friend of mine came up uh, a couple of weeks ago and said, hey, look, a friend of mine taught me about this great rock. It's I could use for anti perspirant I just rub this rock under my arm and I don't have BO and I don't sweat. And I go, great, what's the rock called? It's an alum rock. Well, alum stands for aluminum aluminum. It's toxic. It poisons your cells. It poisons your brain. Don't use it. So there's a lot of uh, things out there that we don't even know are toxic or killing us or causing more pollutant to us, you know, more, more toxins in our body. Our body has the ability to absorb a certain amount of toxins. Every one of us has a different size cup or bowl that can be filled up before we get sick. Soon as that bowl runneth over or that cup runneth over, we now get sick and it's going to cause chronic and if not deadly disease. It's going to mutate cells, mutate the mitochondria and mutate, turn on the bad genes in our body so that we actually get chronic disease. Right now we have 80% um, of the people in our country have multiple um, autoimmune diseases or chronic diseases, according to Michigan State University study. You know, um, we are the most obese country in the industrialized world out of something like 139 countries. Uh, we have, we're asleep at the wheel. Um, who's ever running the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, is asleep at the wheel. Who's ever running the CDC is asleep at the wheel or not. So the CDC is supposed to be there to protect us. But when you find out how many patents they have on different drugs and that they get money, they get huge profits out of those drugs, they're allowing, um, the food industry is allowing toxins and fillers in our food that um, should never be put in there. But, you know, they're turning a blind eye and uh, it's coming down to us making us sicker and sicker and sicker. Um, there's a great book that you should all have on your shelf by Sally Fallon. It's been around for probably 30 years or more. It's called Nourishing Traditions. 
And in this book, she talks about a Dr. Fredericks, who was the head of the Harvard Nutritional Department at Harvard University. And I'm going to give a, not necessarily a quote, because I don't have the book with me, but he says, you know, if Americans didn't like their food sweet, they wouldn't eat sugar. And sugar, whether it comes from sugar cane or from vegetables, is all the same. And, uh, you know, you should really read the quote. I've read it on the show many times. I will read it in the next weeks to come as I'm preparing us to really take a look at our diet. And he goes, look, if people didn't like sugar, we wouldn't need it. Wow. You know, back in the 1800s, we would eat about 10 pounds of sugar a year. Right now, it's about over, almost 200 pounds of sugar that we consume in processed food that we eat, going out to eat restaurants. They use sugar to make the food taste better. We don't even know what we're getting, let alone the umpteen names that you have for um, um, MSG, monosodium glutamate, and other things that are toxic to our food. How many of our grains are sprayed with glyphosate, Roundup, and then that stuff gets into our brain and it opens up the blood-brain barrier and pushes the toxins, heavy metals, molds, and things deeper, deeper into our brain and makes us sicker and sicker and sicker. So we get these diseases. You go to the doctor and they don't know what's going on. And then they give you more and more medications that just covers up the symptom and doesn't ever get to the root of the problem. If this weren't the case, we would not be rated 47th in the world for health. We would not consume 50% of, to 70% of all the drugs made in the world, depending on what you articles you look at. So 4% of the world population is consuming 50 to 70% of all the drugs made in the world, and we're still rated 47th in the world for health. And there's a lot of other things going on when it comes down to the power that is telling us what to do with our lives. So our food industry is, as far as I am concerned, is in treason. Treason is betrayal after trust. We trust some of us, trust the government, they trust the FDA, they trust the CDC to do what's best. But when you look at the money being made behind closed doors and the fortunes being made and the um, blind leading the blind, and I talked about hypnotism, which is when you stress out a person long enough that you lower their awareness, and anytime you're under stress, the sympathetic nervous system, by definition, turns off cognitive function, by definition, because every time you're under stress, it shuts down cognitive function, your immune system, and your digestive system so you can run from the tiger. And when you keep it that way long enough, you're not paying attention to, I mean, you're just trying to survive. So a lot of the minuscule things are no longer make such an, a difference to you. So you just, they become normal. So now the normal becomes the, the constant feeding of little bits of lies or information that they want, somebody wants you to be able to now believe is truth because you've heard it so much that it now becomes truth and you don't question it anymore. And after you do this long enough, you have a society that believes that it's okay to go eat fast food or that you know the dairy, the dairy cows that aren't organic um, are healthy. When you know that the dairy cows that stand in mud all day in their own feces are injected with antibiotics to kill the bugs, they're, they're eating grain that's uh, sprayed with glyphosate. And then because they're milked so much and they're, um, their udders are so inflamed, they're giving more antibiotics. And that that udder, I'm not going to get too graphic here, but has a lot of disease in it. That milk now comes out and has to be pasteurized because it's so sickening. And we eat this stuff. We eat this cheese that comes from this kind of stuff. So, you know, the food and drug uh, industry, I guess, has said, oh, we've made it safer by doing pasteurization and putting uh, hormones in milk and um, all these different things. Well, just because it might be the, I don't even, it's not the lesser of two evils, but it is doing something. Doesn't mean it's right, safe, or should be 
the norm in a country that is the United States, which is the greatest country in the world still. So uh, again, on the next few minutes, I'll just talk about the course that we'll be doing starting in about four to five weeks. You can sign up for it. I will be doing it online. I mean, I will be doing it on the radio show, but if you really want to do it, you should be able to watch these meetings live on Zoom. So um, every week from one, every Saturday from one to two o'clock, I will be running this thing live on Zoom. You can watch it and get a lot more out of it because I will be putting on the screen the information that you need. Uh, we won't be serving people, servicing people individually on this because I just don't have, I wish I could, I just don't have the time to do it. But I know I have to get this out to you guys and a large group of people. So we're gonna do it in a way that I can do it. The, the Facebook group, Health Rebels, will be a really good place for you to get information. Uh, so week one, we're gonna shift your body into ketosis, explain what that is and show you how to test it safely and correctly. It's not a peace strip. Um, Week two, we'll be going over how to eat. No, don't eat less, but eat less often. Week three, we'll talk about intermittent fasting and what an in, eating window is and how to find a safe eating window for yourself. Week four, we'll talk about diet variation, something that, that's called a feast and famine cycle. And this is one of the main things missing by everybody out there doing the ketogenic diet. They don't know what the, fe the feast and famine cycle is. They don't know what diet variation is. It's an ancient healing strategy. And uh, after a while of doing some kind of diet, it gets flat, they get sick, they quit, or they just quit losing weight and that becomes a norm now. And they are now eating less calories, um, getting less nutrition, and it's not going to be good for their health. Week five, we're going to go over the feast famine cycle um, in uh, further detail and show you when and why to do it during the week and what it looks like. Week six, we're going to talk about what happens if you actually do a few day fasting, a block fast, where you're going to do either a water fast or a bone block, bone broth fast, and what this does for your body. It's actually going to help your body break down something, something called autophagy, autophagy, where your body breaks down all of the bad cells, unhealthy cells, and organ cells in your body. And then it will cause your body to produce a massive amount of stem cells during that time. So your body can rebuild itself healthily with your own stem cells. You, it's going to be get healthier and healthier cells. And then week seven, we're going to talk about breaking a fast. You don't want to stay in ketosis forever. You don't want to stay on any diet forever. That's called diet variation. So uh, I hope that this has been Fun for you, don't get stuck in a maybe. Yes, no, no maybes. Uh, you can ask me more about that stuff. I found it from a guy named L. Ron Hubbard, pretty amazing information that he has. And I would like to uh, go out with a song by um, Cold Blood, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, I'm sorry, called Spinning Wheel. And you know what? Life goes up, life goes down, spinning wheel goes round, but you can make decisions to change your life there's no time like today to do it and get going. We'll talk to you next week. Uh -huh.